What is a story more about desire than the story of Tristan and Isolde? In Wagner's opera of the same name, Tristan und Isolde, we go into this world of desires and of passions, where there is forbidden love between, between Tristan, who has actually just killed Isolde's husband, and Isolde, who hates him for it and she wants to actually kill him. And so she resolves to poison the both of them, which Tristan accepts begrudgingly. And they drink, and it turns out that Isolde's maid has actually substituted a love potion for this. Now, of course, the opera goes on and on and on about this forbidden passion between Tristan and Isolde. The night is the time when the lovers can be together, when their passion can burn the brightest and consummate itself. And the day is when they must hide their forbidden love. In any case, many horrible things happen that keep them apart, including Tristan being murdered. And so Isolde finally succumbs to this Liebestod, this love death, when finally in death, like in night, she is united with Tristan. And the music of Tristan and Isolde has been crafted in such a masterful way by Wagner to epitomize this endless desire, this endless longing, in such a way that the music starts out and it never, ever really resolves until the very end of this four-hour-odd opera, at the very end of Isolde's Liebestod, at the end of her love death. And so this tension of desire is just there running through the whole opera. We're just going to hear the prelude, the very first bit of orchestral music at the start of this opera. But it has in it, in the first couple of bars, a chord that has been talked about endlessly in musical circles ever since. It starts off with cellos. There's a crescendo here, but you get the point. This, this slightly crunchy chord, this Tristan chord that has got scholars and musicians and conductors, everybody talking for more than a century now. It's an interesting chord. It's, it's very dissonant. It doesn't all add up. It has on the bottom what we call a tritone. The devil's tone in music was banned in the church in the Middle Ages. And a perfect fourth on top. And together, it's sort of crunchy, and it needs some sort of resolution. That this is how it resolves at the beginning of the prelude, but it resolves in all kind of different ways. In fact, some scholars will contend that it doesn't actually have a function. In that, it's just there for the pure sensual pleasure of desire, which isn't always so clean and pure. In any case. You'll hear this, this chord come in in the winds as this endless melody goes on and on and on. And we sail away in Tristan and Isolde's beautiful endless love. <laughs> 